let me ask you something. How are you feeling this morning? Please respond to me in the chat. You guys can even discuss a little bit while we wait for some of your classmates to come in and let's share some feelings. <laughs> um, I appreciate you guys sharing with me how it is that you're feeling this morning. Let's go and do our do now. But first let's look at our objective. Today, students, you guys will be able to learn and analyze and interpret commonly said phrases, then determine their meaning through research in groups. Knowing their meaning, you will compare and contrast in their interpretation to actual meaning of the phrases with 80% accuracy. To demonstrate your understanding, you will generate your own phrase. And click the first assignment under ELA figurative language, you'll find the activity in the worksheet for today. If you're having any issues, please let me know. Give me a thumbs up once you have it open and we can all be on the same page together. If you're having a hard time and it's taking a long time to download, give me a thumbs down. If you're waiting for it to load, give me a sideways thumb. Thank you. All right, it looks like everybody is prepared and we're all on the same page. Okay, so as you guys look at this, this is your worksheet. It's gonna help you navigate all the things that we're gonna be doing today and even your homework that you're gonna be doing once you finish class, once class is over and everything. Uh, so first, let's go and do our do now. As you can see, your do now is to take a moment and think of a phrase you've heard a family member say, then record it on a sticky note on the class jam board. Make sure to include your name on the sticky note like the example below. So if you do not know how to create a sticky note, I'm going to show you how right now. Please listen carefully and watch how I do it. Over here to your left, you're going to have a sidebar with all these different tools. One of them is going to look like a sticky note. And if you hover your mouse over it, it will say sticky note. Click on sticky note and a small menu will appear. You're going to type what your phrase is. And then you're going to put a dash and your name. Once you have finished, you can change your color if you'd like to. And then you're going to press save and it will appear. Remember, as you guys are putting in your sticky notes to be respectful of other people who'd also need to put uh, their sticky note in here, I believe there's about 20 of you, you all. So I need for you to uh, make sure that the size of your sticky note is going to leave room for everybody to contribute to the Do Now Jamboard. Please give me a thumbs up once you have completed your sticky note and I see it on the board. Okay, so it looks like everybody has theirs done. So as you can see, there's some different ones that we have up here and they're all a little bit weird, but there's a reason why. Common phrases and things being said over and over again gets to be like a game of telephone. I don't know if you've ever played a game of telephone, but it's like you whisper something in someone's ear and by the time that it comes out on the other end, it's completely different. And so that is the case actually with the example that I have. If you see my sticky note here where it says she's the cat's mother, this is the same thing. I had asked my mom for a phrase and she had told me something that my grandmother would often say is, oh, she's the cat's mother. And I decided I was going to do some research for this lesson. And I looked up what this phrase actually meant. This phrase was actually used in co the correction of another person to another. So for instance, let's say these two people, they were going out, they're going to go shopping, or they're going to go out onto the street, um, and they want to invite another person along. One person would ask, so who's coming with us? And then the other person would reply, oh, she's coming with us. And they'd probably be pointing at somebody and not saying their name, right? So the other person would respond, who's she? The cat's mother, right? And that would be a way for them to correct 
them not saying the the appropriate thing. So it would be a person's name, or would say it would be their friend or their relative, whatever it may be. So the correct response would be, you know, oh, uh, Julia is coming with us. Oh, oh, Tina is coming with us, right? Oh, the teacher is coming with us. Okay, and so that is how, as you can see, because there's been a couple of missing words, maybe the punctuation is different, the phrase meaning has changed. Now that we've discussed our do now, let's go and, and do our own a little bit of interpreting in our Padlet. Please give me a thumbs up once you have it open. Okay, looks like I have a lot of thumbs. That's great. Um, I appreciate you guys showing me that you're there with me. We're all on the same page. This is great. Okay, so what I want you guys to do now is I want you to read the phrase that I have and it says, ask me no questions and tell me, and I'll tell you no lies. And I want for you to think about what this may possibly mean and record you, what you think it means by making a post of your own. The way that you're going to make your post, you're going to click here. You're going to write the title that could be your name. It will be your name. And then your response will go underneath. Please make sure not to delete anybody's post while we are in here. Please be respectful of other people's works. And the way that I want you to, to write your phrase is right here. So if there's any sort of confusion, you can look here for an example. I would like for you to start with, I think this phrase means, or you're going to use the phrase and say, ask me no questions and I'll tell, no lie, tell you no lies means on and on and on. Why is it do you think that it's talking specifically about lies? So are we taking it for face value? How do you think that other than looking at it for what it literally says, can it mean something else? Yeah, all right, okay. So I, got, I want you guys to keep this in mind. When we go into our groups, be mindful of not taking things for their face value, right? Take them figuratively because we are talking about figurative language so that means how you imagine things to be or how you see things literally is not how they actually are when you imagine them okay now let's go look at i'm going to show you guys a jam board you guys also have access to this jam board it's the same one that you did for your do now so go back to your Jamboard. And then what you're going to do is you're gonna click these arrows that are up at the top where it says next frame, click next frame once, and then click it twice and you should come up on this board. Please get into groups of three or four people. All right, now that I see that you all have gotten together um, and I'm going to put you guys in your breakout rooms or in your meets, um, what I want for you guys to do is to look at the Jamboard and determine amongst yourselves what phrase you would like to work on as a group. Once you have figured out what phrase you would like, I would like for you to edit that sticky note and put your name on it. Okay, and once you have edited it, press save and leave it alone. Once you have picked your phrase, make sure that you record what phrase it is on the page here. And remember to also include the name of the members in your group on your worksheet as well. It is your job as a group to work together in these different roles that I'm showing you up on the board to come together and have a consensus or an agreement about what this phrase could be interpreted as, what the actual meaning of the phrase is. I want for you to talk about 
how it could be misinterpreted, what may have made it misinterpreted, and all of these things you can find on your sheet. So you need to answer, work together to answer these questions. It is up to you to say whether or not the uh, website is a trusted source. Remember, we've discussed what trusted sources are when we started um, doing at work on essays. Uh, please remember it might be .gov or .org. Um, Wikipedia is not a trusted source per se. And then um, after you finish answering all these questions, please call me in to your group and I will look at your work and uh, release you from your breakout room. Um, I will be circulating into your breakout rooms to see how everything is going and to make sure that you guys are doing what you're supposed to be doing and everybody is functioning in their role. I will also be there to answer any questions that you may have. Please do not be afraid to speak up. So let's talk about this. Let's discuss, can the meaning of a phrase change? Okay, I'm seeing a lot of head nodding, okay. Why can a phrase change? What makes the phrase change? Okay, so who here had a phrase in their group and it changed. What's the difference between the, the, the phrase that you copy down versus the actual meaning? Okay, so some words were missing, all right. Punctuation, okay. Okay, all right. So we notice the difference between what we may have been told versus what it actually was are two different things and that could uh, manipulate the meaning of the phrase, right? So knowing what we know, let's go to our exit ticket. So in class, we discussed common phrases and how they can be changed. And we learned that the, these phrases, because of certain things like blood is thicker than water, jack of all trades, can be changed to be positive or negative in different ways, right? So what I want you guys to do before you leave class today um, is to answer, do this exit ticket and send it in to me. You're gonna answer the two questions that are below. Why do you think a phrase may have changed? And why do you think, what do you think influences phrases to change? Please remember before you finish your exit ticket that you have homework tonight and it is for you to go and create your own phrase. You can find the link to all of that on your group work worksheet. So you're still gonna need that. So I don't want you to turn that into me just yet, okay? That is your group work is going to serve as an example for you to use to help you with your homework. I want you to remember the discussions that you had in your groups where you're trying to think of a situation that your phrase can be used in and the possibilities of why it may be misinterpreted. Remember that you, know, you are all different people. You all have different, uh, ideas of what a phrase may mean when you were in talking in your groups, right? So this could also be reflected in the phrase that you come up with and how it can be misinterpreted. It may mean that, you know, you need to tell me why. You have to tell me uh, what could have happened. Is your phrase in another language? If your phrase is in another language, does it mean that there's a language barrier there? Please, you know, explain to me in detail, okay? So going back to your exit ticket, I'm going to give you guys the last 10 minutes of class to work on this. Okay. That's my lesson. Thank you for watching.